everyone welcome to civil engineering mastery in this video we are going to discuss about basics of structural analysis everyone may wonder why do we need to do structural analysis structural analysis is the very basic element in order to do the structural design without structural analysis the structural design is not possible so it is mandatory to know about structural analysis before starting the structural design here i have divided into three parts of this basics of structural analysis in the first part we are going to discuss about what is structural analysis and equilibrium equations in the second part we are going to discuss about support reactions and types of supports in the third part of this series we are going to discuss about statically determinate and indeterminate structures let us discuss the first part what is structural analysis structural analysis is the process of determining the internal forces developed due to external loads in each part of the structural elements let me explain with simple example consider our human body skeleton it is an assembly of bones of different shapes and sizes and all are connected with joints similarly a structure is an assembly of beams columns slabs and all are connected with joints let us discuss what is happening in the structural analysis each and every structure has to carry the external loads such as dead load live load wind load earthquake load and snow load due to these loads the internal reactions will develop in each and every part of the structural elements it is in the form of shear force bending moment torsion and axial force these internal reactions will cause internal stresses in the structure as a result of the internal stresses the structure undergoes deformation do we allow the structure to deform absolutely not our main goal is to design the structure without any deformation during its lifetime let's look into an overview of structural analysis and design before starting the design we need to have a plan of the structure after that we need to choose the type of the structure according to their purpose or usage of structure the structure may be a rcc structure or maybe steel structure or timber structure whatever it may be once the type of structure is finalized we have to assume the member size based on the thumb rule and experience after that we have to apply the loads we have to arrive the loads what are all the loads coming on the structure and we have to apply the loads once the loads are applied then we have to start analyzing the structure from the analysis we can get the internal forces by using the internal forces we can design the structure after the designing of structure we have to check for the allowable limits based on codes and standards if the allowable limits are okay satisfied then whatever the member size we have assumed is okay if it is not satisfied then we have to revise the member size and redo the structural analysis and design in some cases the member size will be more whatever we have assumed will be more 
than the required one. In such cases, we have to reduce the member size and redo the analysis and design. In some cases, whatever the member size we have assumed will be less than the required one. In such cases, we have to increase the member size and we have to redo the analysis and design. We are moving into equations of equilibrium. Before that, it will be interesting to recall our basic physics that is Newton's first law of motion. Consider a ball at rest. This ball will remain at rest until a force is going to act on it. In the next case, an unbalanced force is acting on this ball. The ball will start to move. This is the Newton's first law of motion. An object stays at rest when the unbalanced force is not acted on them. An object stays in motion when the unbalanced force is acted on them. Similarly, our building has to maintain the balance of force to remain at rest. Equilibrium conditions. When a structure is subjected to external loads, the external loads and internal forces developed in the structure are in equilibrium. A structure has to maintain the balance of forces and moments, then the structure is said to be in equilibrium condition. As per Newton's first law of motion, an object will remain at rest until the action of unbalanced forces. Structures are stable when all their parts are in a state of equilibrium. If there is no equilibrium, the structure will start to move. Let me explain with simple example. Here, consider a simple beam. Here are the external forces. Vertical force is 20, horizontal force is 5. And these are all the internal forces. Here, the concept is the external forces and internal forces should be in a balanced condition. That means the sum of external forces will be equal to the sum of internal forces. Here, Ra plus Rb that is internal forces are equal to the external force. So, the vertical force is balanced here. Same way, horizontal force is 5 here and uh, the external horizontal force is also 5. So, horizontal force is also balanced. Now, we can conclude that the structure is stable. Let's move on to the equilibrium equations. Two-dimensional equilibrium equations. Consider a two-dimensional two element. The directions are given here, x and y. For this two-dimensional element, there are three possible equilibrium equations. That is, two for force and one for moment. Force in x direction is equal to zero. Force in y direction is, is equal to zero and summation of moment is equal to 0. The next one is the three-dimensional equilibrium. Consider a three-dimensional element. The directions are given here. For three-dimensional element, we have six possible equilibrium equations, three for forces and three for moments. Sum of forces in x direction is equal to 0 sum of forces in y direction is equal to 0, sum of forces in z direction is equal to 0, the same way sum of moment in x direction is equal to 0, and sum of moments in y direction is equal to 0, sum of moments in z direction is equal to 0. These are all the 
equations of equilibrium for two dimensional and three dimensional problems what is the use of the equilibrium equations the internal loadings of a member can be determined by using these equilibrium equations. Once the member is selected, it should be isolated from its supports and all the forces and moments must be shown that act on the member. The number of reaction at each support should be determined, that is support reactions. For example, here consider a beam. So for this beam, there are two possible reactions at this support and at joint B, there are two possible reactions at this support. So friends, let us discuss about the support reactions and types of supports in detail in the next video. So friends, hope you like this video. Please comment, like and share and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.